they could like look at your cards probably. Yeah, I just always look away, but yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah as soon it's as just, it starts you, getting you lifted up, I looked the other way. It's hard. Oh, you know. like 600, right? Uh, no, I think. Oh, that's brutal. Like the deck of cards that's like this, or on all deck of cards? All of them. Mm. It's just his eyes. Yeah, eyes are better. How to wear glasses? Yeah. But you don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> I have this damn autoimmune disease, and it's like. Mm. Yeah. Destroys my body. I would have liked to have done LASIK, but they won't let me. Really? Yeah. Like because of the autoimmune yeah. disease? Mm -hmm. So what, they, it's like higher risk? Yeah. Mm. In this video for PokerNews.com, we are playing on day two of the $300,000 buy-in Super High Roller Bowl. Action folds around to Chris Brewer in the small blind. For those who do not know, Chris Brewer is actually the newest guest coach at PokerCoaching.com. He has some content coming out in our gigantic very in-depth, advanced cash game course that will be released very, very soon. So make sure you head over to pokercoaching.com to check that out. We'll put a link down there in the description somewhere to make it easy on you. He has the Ace-8 offsuit playing about 53 big blinds deep against Jason Kuhn in the big blind. Jason Kuhn's a good, strong, world-class player. And when you have two great players playing against each other, usually they're going to try to play good, strong GTO poker. Chris Brewer opts to limp the Ace-8 offsuit. You may think that ace high should raise is probably the best hand. But no, 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 no. If you look at the GTO preflop charts on pokercoaching.com, you will see very clearly ace eight limps most of the time. Over to Jason Kuhn with the ace 10 offsuit. That should raise most of the time. He does opt to put in a four big blind raise because ace 10 is excellent, especially against a marginal ish limping range. And back to Brewer. He has an easy call. Again, some people think you have an ace, you should re raise as a bluff. But Ace eight offsuit in this scenario mostly just calls and heads to the flop. Ace ace three on the flop here. Both players with an ace. Hello. Kuhn in a potential gold mine of a situation here versus Chris Brewer. Also, Donnie, the fact that it's a blind battle, adding some extra spice to this. Yeah, this could be a pretty big pot here. Brewer does have Coon covered. Oh uh, yeah, I was looking at you. You were looking at him. I was. Yeah. All right, Brewer had checked, so action is on Jason Coon here. Preflop. This was limp from Brewer in the small blind, raised to forty thousand. So four times the big blind from Jason Coon. Brewer made the call. Coon's going to come with twenty-two thousand here with his. Trip aces and 10 kicker. Cool. Chris Brewer makes the call. The flop comes ace, ace three with two diamonds. Chris Brewer has the ace of diamonds. Jason Kuhn has none. Brewer checks as he will do with his entire range. And then Jason Kuhn makes a tiny bet of 22,000 only into the 90,000 chip pot. You may think, why isn't he betting bigger? Doesn't he want to get money in against worse aces? And doesn't he want to protect against flush draws? Yeah, that'd be nice. However, if you consider Brewer's range, Brewer's range is going to contain a whole lot of junk. And so, Kuhn wants to do everything he can to try to keep Brewer in with all sorts of junk. And against a tiny bet, you do have to stick around incredibly wide. Now, Brewer does happen to have one of the better hands he could have, so obviously he's never folding this. But, I mean, imagine Brewer sitting here with Jack-10 of spades. You certainly can't fold that to a small bet. And, well, you have jack high against trips out of position. It's not a good spot to be in, right? And to be fair, against small bets, Brewer should be check raise bluffing some portion of the time. And as you face a bigger bet, you should be check raise bluffing less often. Now, obviously, Kuhn would love to get check raise here. So betting small will induce more raises from Brewer in general. Maybe with hands like 5-4, if he happens to have some hands like that for a gut shot. Maybe even a hand like... 6-5 of spades for a backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw. Maybe that gets after it against a tiny bet. They would just let it go against a bigger bet. 
So I love the Bethlehem Coon. Over to Brewer. Brewer realizes in the spot that he is going to be running into some better aces some portion of the time. And if he happens to be against a worse ace, he's probably going to win a ton of money anyway. And on top of that, Coon could have a lot of nar marginal stuff too, because Coon's raising range over the small blind lip shouldn't actually contain a whole lot of junk, as well as a lot of the best hands. So Brewer really wants to keep Coon in when he has junk, so that those hands will potentially bluff later or improve to a pair that can pay Brewer off. So even with trips, Brewer does not raise. He calls, and we head to the turn. Pot now up over 100,000. Queen of diamonds on the turn. Brewer does have that eight of diamonds. Could be a little uh, emergency <laughs> saver there if it right. comes to it. Chris Brewer checks again. Ninety thousand this time. Chris Brewer taking a look back at his hand. Brewer makes the call. Oh, we got a pot here, yeah, up over 300k now. The turn is the queen of diamonds. Brewer checks, as he's going to do with his entire range. And then Kuhn goes for a chunky bet, 90,000 into the 134,000 chip pot, setting up roughly a pot size river shove if Brewer calls. So at this point, Brewer's hand has shriveled up substantially because if you consider the hands that Kuhn will bet the flop, bet the turn, and then potentially jam the river with, that's going to be good aces and flushes. Full houses, of course. Will Kuhn value bet all in on the river with a hand like ace five? Well, maybe. The problem is that even ace five is going to get a chop a lot of the time. So this is a very rough scenario. Notice also that Kuhn has to be very concerned that Brewer is just sitting here with a flush, right? Because Brewer would definitely check call the flop with a lot of flush draws and then just never fold them. So... Brewer cannot justify folding his ace eight at this point because he is you know, drawing even against, if he is against a flush already. He does have the eight of diamonds for backup if he's against a hand like ace king, no diamond. So I think Brewer has to call. This is another situation where I think a lot of people just decide to check shove all in because they think, well, I probably have the best hand. I have trips. It's likely good. And to be fair, it is likely good, but <laughs> not necessarily when you, get, you shove and get called, right? Then you're going to be in very bad shape. So Brewer realizes this is, only a bluff catcher, even though it is normally a very strong hand. He just calls, and we head to the river. We got a real pot brewing here. River is the ten of hearts. That locks it up for Coon with the full house and makes him feel even better about it. You know, had his opponent maybe had some sort of flush in there. Does it also, in a weird way, help Brewer think that maybe he's chopping maybe it he's at, chopping? at that yeah. worst, you know? Yeah. Brewer checked already, so let's see what Coon's going to come with here. Without a doubt, going to be betting this full house. He's only got a little bit more than pot behind, so... Maybe he goes for that, I'll put it all in except for one chip type of move that right. we see so often. Definitely. And there is exactly that. Kuhn pushes all but 1K into the middle. A bet of 367,000. And Chris Brewer knows. You heard him there. This is a lame spot. This is super lame. The river is the 10 of hearts. Chris Brewer checks. And then Jason Kuhn applies maximum pressure. All in minus one chip. So almost maximum pressure. 
for a little bit more than the size of the pot with his full house. I would actually be interested to know if the river was something like a king or a jack or any other random card that did not give Kuhn a full house. I wonder if he would actually jam the river. I don't know. We can ask him. Jason, I know you watch this sometimes. Let us know in the comment section below. So, Brewer's in a bad spot. Let's see what he does. I never get that with the 367. Uh, just in case if like you lose a hand, you give yourself a chance to like uh, trip I fold. Next one. So, like, the next Look at that. Chris Brewer, well uh, done, so sir. Wow. Chris Brewer on the right end of all these decisions so far today. I think he's impressed me the most. Making big folds in a tournament is never an easy thing to do, but it actually is a skill you must master if you want to succeed at poker against the best players and also against players who are kind of weak and tight and straightforward. What I want to know, though, is what is a skill that you think is vitally important to master if you want to crush tournaments? Take a second, think about it, and let me know in the comment section down below. I think a skill that is very important to master if you want to succeed at tournaments is that you do not regularly put yourself in situations where you have to make big folds. A lot of people check raise the flop in Brewer's scenario with the ace eight, and then they get re-raised or they get called and they end up playing for all the money every single time in this situation. And that's not really where you want to be. And then they have to end up making a big fold. A lot of players play super duper tight before the flop and their opponents know it. They know they have aces. And so if you have aces and your opponent knows you have aces and your opponent still wants to put all their money in, well, they can probably beat aces, right? So playing either in a manner that forces your opponent to have a strong range or in a manner that telegraphs your strong range to begin with against anyone who's halfway near competent is really, really bad. Now in this scenario, Brewer did <laughs> really everything he could to not have to play for all his money. He just limped pre-flop. He just called the raise pre-flop. He check called the bet on the flop. He check called the turn. But, you know, to Jason Kuhn's credit, he forced Brewer to put all the money in in this scenario. So what should Brewer actually do? We saw that he folded, which I think is actually a very, very nice, amazing fold. But should this be a standard fold? Let's consider the hands that Kuhn would actually jam the river with for value. Well, full houses, obviously. Flushes, obviously. And perhaps good aces, ace-king, ace-jack, maybe weaker aces like ace-nine, although as your ace gets weaker and weaker, the kicker becomes irrelevant, right? So maybe he's only jamming something like ace-jack and better. Stuff to know. So if that's all he's jamming here for value, all of that beats Brewer's ace-eight, right? What would he bluff with? Well, if you consider a preflop raising range, we're going all the way back to preflop, I presume Kuhn is playing very, very close to GTO. And it turns out the GTO preflop raising range against the small blind limp doesn't actually contain a whole lot of King of Diamonds X. Okay. And on the turn, Jason Kuhn may not bet King of, Diamond, King of Diamonds X because that actually has some amount of showdown value. So we need Kuhn to be blasting off with Jack of Diamonds X, like Jack 7, Jack 6, Jack 5, which are hands that could conceivably raise before the flop over the limp. They would certainly bet the flop and... To some extent, they would lack showdown value on the turn and then may feel inclined to continue blasting. Same thing for 10 of diamonds, X. Maybe he takes that 10 and decides to blast it because he blocks one of Brewer's auto calls with ace 10, if Brewer happens to have that. So if Kuhn's going to be bluffing a lot of those hands, then I think the ace 8 becomes a pretty reasonable call. But if he's not blasting all those hands, as almost no one does, I mean, I'm not going to put it past Jason Kuhn because he's a world-class player and he understands range as well, but... Look, most people under bluff when it comes to tripling it off into someone who obviously has something, right? It's important to realize also, Brewer does have full houses here, at least some of them, and he also has a lot of flushes. And for that reason, I think it's pretty reasonable just to let this ace eight go, which is exactly what Brewer does. I know a lot of people out there would get very sticky with it. They would call it on every time because they think, well, trips, what you gonna do? Trips blind versus blind. Trips against a good, strong, world-class player who can bluff. What can you do? But the answer is you can fold and conserve your stack and continue grinding in this tournament. And that is exactly what Brewer does. That's me for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click the like and subscribe button below. Click the notification bell. And also, if you want to learn from Chris Brewer, our newest guest coach at PokerCoaching.com, head over there right now and check his workout. It is amazing. If you want another video lined up featuring... 
played from this Super I Roll of Roll up we have it lined up for you right now, featuring Jason Kuhn again and Real Kid Poker, Dale Negreanu. Enjoy!